Our next exercise is going to be importing bitmaps and using bitmaps as symbols. This is just a little introduction to it. We're going to come back to bitmaps later and cover it more thoroughly. Let's go ahead and make a new scene, insert scene. And I'm going to say File, Import, and I'm going to import to Stage this time a bitmap, which is going to be a standard file in the Photoshop folder, if it will let me get there. So I will go to Applications and Photoshop. You can use any bitmap. I'm just using what's available. <clears throat> in fact, I know that this isn't even the right size, but it'll work for us, our purposes. So Fish PSD is a layered Photoshop file. I'm going to say Import. And when I do, I'm going to get these options. So I know that I want the background. Well, let's say I only want the colorful fish. I'm going to uncheck the layers that I don't want. I don't want the bubbles. And I do want the colorful fish. So now I'm going to get colorful fish and background. You can have as many as you want. And it says, do you want to place these in the original position? Sure. We can actually tell it to set the stage size. No, we don't want to do that. Not in this case. And I do want it to bring it in as layers as opposed to keyframes. So let's keep the layers there and I will say OK. And it has done just what it said it would do. I'm going to get rid of this. It's brought in the names of the layers from Photoshop and just put them in as layers. So I'm ready to actually play around with this file. I've got the background. Let's take the background and normally I wouldn't say I would not recommend this, but since this is just for exercise purposes, I'm going to actually stretch this so that it fills my stage. Now, if I want to be more mathematical about it, I can go to the properties, make sure I've got this selected, and just tell it, you know, I want this to be the same as my stage size, which is 640 tab by 360. And it is going to distort it. And it's not going to set it at 0, 0, but we can also do that here. So set it to 0, 0. Now, there it is. So it's perfectly covering my stage. All right, so that's all I'm going to do with that. I'm not going to animate the background. And because I'm not going to animate it, I don't need to turn it into a symbol. So I'm just going to come out to frame 60, and I'm going to hit F5 so that I have it stay on the duration of what I'm going to have animated. So let's lock that. Now I'm going to deal with my little fish. Let's say I want to have one of these fish swim, or maybe multiples of them swim. Um, I don't want them to swim like this, though, because that looks a little goofy. So I can do a little bit of editing of photographs in Flash. And to do that, what I need to do is go under Modify and choose Break Apart. And when I do, I get this sort of dot pattern which is going to allow me to actually take the lasso tool in Flash and remove these other fish by just kind of circling them and deleting them. And you'll see that there are still dots around my fish, but that's okay. So I've got my little fish here now, and because I want to animate my fish, I need to turn it into a symbol. Actually, I'm going to get rid of this one little bit down here. I wish I could just click on it and select it, but it selects all of my fish. So let me just get rid of that one little blip down there, hopefully. And let's see what we've got now. Okay, so I'm going to convert him to a symbol. You can either go Modify, Convert to Symbol, or use the F8. And I'm going to stick with a graphic for now, and I'm going to call it a fish. <laughs> Imagine that. Okay, so there's my fish. And now, just like any other symbol, I can add a motion tween. I can... Interesting, what have I got there? Something else. This is definitely layer 4. I don't know what this is, so let's delete it. Okay, I can extend my tween. And just like any other symbol, I can move my fish so that it swims across. And I can bend the tween or whatever it is that I would like to do with it. And now I've got a bitmap fish swimming across my water. Now just like any other symbol, I can have multiple instances of my fish. So I'm going to bring out another instance of the fish. And I'm going to actually drag the keyframe so that it starts a little bit later. 
and just modify it using some of the techniques that we've used. Let's make it a little smaller so it doesn't look like exactly the same fish. Maybe even give it a little bit of a tint. Maybe tint it a little bit, whoa, <laughs> tint it a little bit blue so that it looks like it's a little bit further back in the water. And I'll add a motion tween. And have it swim across also. And, and maybe follow this other fish, but uh, change the path of it a little bit. Ah, I've got this transform tool, so it doesn't allow me to um, bend my tween. Let's bend it with the black arrow tool. There we go. So now my little fish swims across after the big fish, catches up to it. Maybe I want the big fish to go off the stage sooner, so I can just drag this back a little bit, which helps to give it a little bit more of a natural feeling, if such a thing can be said. <laughs> Alright, so that's just a little introduction to animating with bitmaps.